Hey guys, Lancey here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for joining me while looking to this article from the Sunday Morning Herald for Australia. Housing prices are plunging, but some buyers are left in the cold. So, what is happening in Australia for housing? Houses went up crazy in the last couple of years, like especially the last two years, but everyone knows that because it happened everywhere. Uh, Adelaide specifically has been very cheap compared to a lot of other places. Perth is cheaper, but for some reason people like to come to Adelaide when Perth has actually got better weather, better infrastructure, probably better job prospects if you actually studied and did stuff. But people like Adelaide, I'm not too sure why. So Adelaide prices are now the highest and the most stable of all of the other cities, I think. Brisbane certainly isn't doing well. Sydney, Melbourne are flatlining, but doing okay. And Perth is surprisingly not doing well, even if it's got a rental crisis. So let's have a look at what this article is talking about. First home buyers are experiencing little respite in the property market downturn as property as falls in property values are offset by jump in mortgage rates. New research shows. So yes, of course, mortgage rates have gone up almost three times, almost three times. I locked in mine at 1.99. I'd be very surprised if you can get something below four, five percent. Uh, maybe Variable, you can get like four to five, and locked in, you can get four to five, but that is still an insane jump up for what you're paying in interest. Now, remember, it is interest payments. Uh, I think the home loan amount is the same, it's the interest. So, I would pay probably another few hundred dollars on top of mine if I didn't lock it in. And mine's coming out of fixed in about two or three years. I forgot exactly when, but yeah, I got some time to save and make some cushion, but we'll see how that goes. Typical. <laughs> It would take a typical Australian first home buyer 10.9 years to save a deposit, barely lower than the 11.3 years required in the prior quarter. Crazy. 10.9 years. So a decade and a bit more just to save. And this is for probably a couple. I don't know if it says that, but it probably is for a couple because you're talking about a million dollar houses. If you're renting and you're spending money and you're actually living life, you're going to have a lot of trouble saving that kind of money. Time to save varied by the cities, and Sydney first home buyers will have to save for 12.8 years, while Melbourne 10.6, Brisbane 10.1, and Perth 7.7. So Perth is good. And Perth has also got higher pay if you're into mining and stuff. As always, they miss out on Adelaide, even in this website. This sucks. The report assumes a household can save 15% of its gross annual income. Uh, let's have a look. Sydney, 15% is annual income now that is actually important to remember because it says gross annual income is that before or after tax if it's after tax that's a very good savings i mean that's what i want everyone to save if they are after tax savings and that's with like everything else that you're paying for but that's maybe a bit too much to ask for but home buyers would need to set aside more of their income for short uh, mortgage repayments yeah that makes sense so it's actually harder to pay than it is to save the 20 percent is terrible. A typical home buyer would need 43.3% for, uh, per of the income to service a new mortgage, up from 38.9%. So another 5% gain, 4 to 5% gain on their monthly payment, just because interest rates have gone up. Now, don't forget, if house prices don't drop by a similar amount, no one's going to be able to buy or keep them. Uh, but certainly not buy them. They're not going to be able to buy them if they don't drop by a similar amount. The, that rises to 51.1% in Sydney and would be 42.4% in Melbourne, 40.3% in Brisbane, and 30.7% in Perth. Where is Adelaide? It takes 11 years. So <laughs> this is so sad. I mean, sorry, it's so, so sad that Adelaide, which is a way smaller town than these three, it still takes 11 years. Actually, I feel even worse for Hobart because Hobart is literally just so disconnected from all of these other places that it actually is quite expensive to do anything over there. And if you're just working like a normal average job of 50 to $60,000, you're going to have trouble in Hobart just surviving, like they're just full stop surviving. Uh, Canberra's get paid a lot because it's a lot of uh, government workers and probably very stable as well. So that makes sense why it's a bit lower, even if it is a higher price for the houses. ANZ senior economist Felicity Emmett said property prices have 
fallen substantially in cities such as Sydney, reducing the time for safe deposit, but that's not a full picture. While on the paper, we might be able to see this metric, which makes assumptions about how much people can save, so just great affordability. I think in reality, it's unlikely that it's actually easier to save for a deposit. Yeah, because you're spending more for rent, spending more for food, everything else has gone up in price. The dollar or AUD has actually devalued. And yeah, people are working more for less. The actual amount needed for a deposit might be a little bit less, but we're in a situation where we have a cost of living running at 7% per annum and pushing probably 8% by the end of Christmas. Crazy. Unless someone has a, uh, someone was a cash buyer, the lift in interest rates meant that there would not have been an improvement in affordability. It's clearly not a medium income earners that are buying medium priced homes. Exactly. So the people that are in the middle can no longer buy these houses. And what that goes to show is that people earning regular incomes are to some degree priced out of these expensive markets. So no longer can a dual income family just buy our average size hose, uh, house, 20 to 30 minutes drive from the city. You know, that's, that's a $600,000, $700,000 house. And, you know, maybe together you're bringing $120,000, maybe a bit more, and then you get taxed. Good, good luck, you know, uh, along with everything else you want to do in life. Emmett said of some very substantial fall in property prices that would need to improve affordability, which she stressed, stressed is an unlikely scenario. Her forecast is an 18% peak to trough fall in house prices, which is probably going to be 2 to 3% or 5% in Adelaide. The report also compared dwelling values to income, finding only a modest reduction in this ratio. Nationally, dwelling value is 8.2 times higher than income, slightly lower than 8.5 in the June quarter, but above the decade average 6.9%. Yeah, okay. So this is pretty depressing to read, but overall, all that's saying is even if house prices drop, they're not dropping by enough to make the medium affordable, uh, medium uh, worker, I guess average income worker or dual family or whatever, to be able to actually afford the houses they could two or three years ago. Why is that? Multiple reasons, which we might cover again. Uh, I actually do think that COVID has shrunk family sizes. A lot of people just want a place of their own and that just pushes up prices a lot. The medium household income level would probably be disputed from actually purchasing the medium dwelling within their region. If you're a high income earner, you might be quite comfortable servicing a mortgage with 30, uh, 40 or 50 or 60% of your income. I'd be very uncomfortable doing that, but who knows, that could be a future. If you're relatively low income, then it can be extremely stressful. Owen said this downturn was about containing inflation, not about housing affordability, so it's unlikely prices would fall to levels that improve the metrics in the report. Ouch. The research also looked at rent, uh, renting and measured the share of incomes required to service rent. This has reached 31% of national, uh, this has reached 31% nationally and has risen in every capital city except Hobart and Canberra. That's interesting. Owen said renting has become more challenging as tenants have to spend more on rents and may not be able to save as much. No doubt. As a conclusion, the overall vibe of the housing market means that they will, they think they can get somewhere now. Before it was just impossibility as prices were spiraling. I agree that first home buyers might have a chance, but I don't think it's a good idea because all of these government schemes are literally schemes. Is there a better way that I can define schemes? I thought schemes is like a sneaky plan. And these sneaky plans are pretty much, let's make sure that the homeowners that already exist can sell their houses for a higher amount because the government is going to use taxpayers' money to subsidize buying and keeping a house. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. It's a pretty interesting story. We'll keep track of it. As I said, the wealth effect is going to circle around the globe and we'll see what damage it's going to do. Thanks for watching and see you next time.